Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we got a lot of eyeshadow palette talk, my favorite thing. I'm going to be rounding up all of the holiday eyeshadow palettes, tell you what's worth it, what's not, the best and the worst. Just basically giving you all of the info you need to know about the holiday palettes that came out this season and hopefully this will help you pick out which palettes are going to be worth it for you, whether to give for somebody else or to keep it for yourself. Let's get into it. For some reason, I was being very particular about what counted as a holiday palette, how it was marketed, the time of year that it came out, all of that. So I've narrowed it down to 24 holiday palettes that I've tried. I'm sure there's more, but there's a couple that just didn't seem holiday-y enough to put in this video. This is not a ranking, so it's not gonna be in any particular order other than alphabetical, just because this is more of a guide to help you out, you know? Let's get started. I will have everything that I'm wearing in the description box. I'm gonna be better about linking jewelry and top so that will be down there if you want to know. Let's get into it. So the first palette that I have to talk about is the ABH Primrose palette. Okay this one doesn't seem very holiday-y to me but I think this was like the holiday launch for ABH and this palette is phenomenal. It is a really superb formulation. I've enjoyed my time with this. I feel like the shimmers are very textured. You do have to like a little bit more warm tones to enjoy this palette. Of course you do have this kind of little plum quad right here which is area that I'm all over but I don't think you would be disappointing with this palette. I mean this really was a comeback palette for ABH if you ask me. It's been a while since they've launched one of these rectangular palettes and this was a bit different which I think is exactly what they needed to do and I'm very happy with everything about this palette. The mattes are really pigmented, they blend super easily so I think you know if you like everyday colors you're looking for a good solid everyday palette that isn't quite boring you know there are some pops in here and some other colors that are going to help make this look look more dramatic but it's still not like a colorful rainbow palette by any means i think a lot of you guys are going to like this palette so i do recommend this one this is definitely a hit for sure especially you know with all the sales going on this time of year or maybe you get a gift card this is worth picking up i recommend it moving into charlotte tilbury i have three eyeshadow palettes to talk about. Let's talk about the little cute quads. So two quads came out and they are just the most darling packaging. So if you're a packaging person, I love these, especially since I collect Charlotte Tilbury quads. The packaging on these are a yes for me. I had to get both of them no matter what they looked like because the packaging matters to me and I think this is really like a limited edition special holiday packaging. So there are two different ones. The first one that I have, the first one that came out is the Celestial Pearl. I definitely recommend this one even if you have a large Charlotte Tilbury collection. I think this is a great piece to have in there. The shimmer shades are really shiny and pretty and still that sophisticated Charlotte Tilbury look but stepped up a little bit. It looks a little boring in the quad. I wasn't necessarily excited about this. I wasn't expecting anything crazy from it but I find that I've reached for it a lot. There's this unique almost duochrome shade in this quad. This is one of my favorite holiday palettes that have came out and it was definitely a big shock. Now this is the palette that I was looking the most forward to from from this launch. This is Cosmic Pearl and unfortunately I really don't recommend this one. This one is a bit of a miss for me. If you didn't guess Celestial Pearl is a hit. The shades in here are kind of lackluster if you ask me and very not unique. Now Charlotte Tilbury has a history of repeating her own shades which you know what I look past it. Whatever. That's not something that bothers me so much but in this case it really did. Like I feel like I just paid for the component because the insides were like eh. Even the special shade in here that's supposed to make this palette stand out. I didn't really care for it. It wasn't that pretty. It's not a bad quality palette. But I think if you are looking to purchase Charlotte Tilbury this time of year, this is not one of the better quads to have come out. The color story is quite uninteresting if you ask me, just knowing what you can get from Charlotte Tilbury. So this is a miss. It's good quality, but I'm not as into it. The last palette that Charlotte Tilbury came out with, this is her annual big instant eye palette. The name is Smoky Eyes Are Forever. And I have to say, it's not my favorite of the ones that she's launched, starting off with the packaging. One of the things that is important to me when it comes to holiday palettes are the packaging. I want it to feel festive. I mean, this is sleek. 
She's sleek, she's cute. Charlotte's come out with such cuter packaging than this while still keeping it elegant. Black is too safe for me. I'm being extra picky here, but I have a lot of the palettes. I don't like the packaging quite as much on this, but I do like the array of colors in here. If you're looking to get started on a Charlotte Tilbury palette, you don't really own anything, this is phenomenal. These 12 pan palettes, in my opinion, are the best value of Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows that you will find. I recommend this over both of the quads just because it's the best value. And in some cases, I do find that sometimes the quality in these 12 pans are better than what you're going to get for the quads. The value's so much better as well. In terms of somebody who has a large Charlotte Tilbury collection, this one isn't necessary. I definitely had all of these shades in my Charlotte Tilbury collection already. But if you are lacking in the Charlotte Tilbury front, you're looking to dip your toes into the formulation. This one is a hit. I really think you'll like it. You won't be disappointed with the formulas here. The next brand that we have is ColourPop. I'm only going to talk about the very true Christmassy themed palette that we have here, which is the Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer palette. Honestly, this shocked me how much I like it. The packaging, first of all, I mean, it can't get any cuter. And then I actually really like the color story in here as well. It is perfectly neutral but still has enough pops to make it a little bit more on the unique side and even if it's a little bit more neutral you can totally tell that it is a christmas palette now on an everyday basis do i want to grab for this no but for the festivities of it all i think it's a hit the quality in here is decent it's typical color pop quality you know it's not amazing but you're also not paying a big penny for it i'm very happy with this and i think i like it so much more so because of the theme rather than the palette itself. Like if this had the same color story and it wasn't Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer themed, I probably wouldn't like it as much as I do. But in terms of it being a holiday palette, I think this is a great gift. I don't think it's something that you absolutely need to enter your collection. I am such a big palette person and I'm a big Christmas person. So I love having this in my collection now. I, it makes me feel happy to open it. I do want to reach for it just to feel festive, but it's not a must have. But it's a great gift and it's just perfect for the theme. So this is a hit in my opinion, but it's like in the middle, like you don't need it, you know? Okay, this next palette, unfortunately you cannot get any more, but oh, it's so good. So this is from Danessa Myricks and this is the Lightwork Volume 3 palette. Now this was quite a pretty penny, but the packaging is quite protective of the shadows. I really like the kind of the scales on here. And basically this is just a collection of like multi-chromes, duo chromes, holograph shades. We have a couple of cream gels in here. There's a pressed glitter. I love this palette. It definitely is outside my comfort zone. I'm not reaching for it very often, but this is the perfect palette if you do not have many multi-chromes or duochromes in your collection to kind of have them all in one place. I said this in my review, but this isn't a palette that you are going to use by itself to <laughs> create a look. I mean, it's possible, but to get the most versatility and the most looks out of this, you definitely want to dig into other palettes that have different shades of mattes. This is just the go-to palette that you pick up when you want that unique shift on the eyelid. And what I love about this palette is that really the only place that you can get multi-chromes from is from indie brands and this is a little bit more accessible and you have them all in one place unfortunately you can't pick it up anymore but it definitely is a hit if you're into playing with makeup i definitely recommend it if you are able to get your hands on it it's not an everyday palette this is not going to be one that is for everybody if you know you're not going to use it do not pick it up but if you're somebody who even in your own house like to just experiment with makeup play with those different shifts if you're like me and you just like to swatch things and that makes you happy. I love this. It is awesome. All right, let's move into Dior. So their holiday collection, I believe it's called the House of Atelier or something of that nature, or the Atelier of Dreams is what it's called. Phenomenal. I absolutely loved their holiday collection this year, just the aesthetic of it all. It aesthetically was one of my favorite collections. I did pick up both of the quints that launched in this collection. They did have a lot of other items as well, but these were the ones that stood out to me. I love the quints. Sometimes they're inconsistent, which is why I picked them up. So there's two. This one is Atelier Dore, and then we also have House of Dreams, which is a little bit more cooler tone. So one leans more cool and taupey. The other one is a little bit more golden. Now, 
I don't think you need both. I have trouble differentiating the two. Like I like both and if I had to pick one, I don't know which one I would pick because they're kind of both so similar. So you don't need both. The quality on these, it's good. It's not Dior's best. If you want to experience the best of Dior's quality, you need to get their luxury quince in the permanent line. Those are the best that you're gonna find from Dior. This is a step below. Like I can definitely tell it's not as good as those. The mattes aren't quite as pigmented or as blendable, but they are still very good. This is still a good luxury palette. But like I said, you can get better from Dior. I have enjoyed my time with these, certainly. I think they're really nice. I don't think they're must-haves. I think they're hits. I don't think Dior went the wrong way with these, but they're definitely not a necessity. If you're not wooed by the embossment or Dior in general, I would definitely pass. These are not must-haves whatsoever. I'm big on the embossments and I personally love Dior's makeup line. I think it is underrated. So I'm very happy with these, but I definitely don't feel like I needed both. And I definitely don't feel like these are the best of Dior. Okay, this was kind of one of the first launches of the holiday season. I don't even know if we'd really consider this holiday, but I got it in PR and on the PR box it said holiday. So I think this is part of their holiday collection. So this is Fenty Beauty. This is the Bomb Posse Mega Mix and Match Eyeshadow Palette. They also have a highlight trio, which I'm going to be talking about in a face palette rankings video for the holidays. Um, But we're just talking about the eyeshadow palette here, and this for me is a miss. I don't really recommend it. It's not that good of quality. It's fine. You can get good looking eye looks with this. I've done a few that looked nice, but it's just not a great palette, you know? Like, the mattes are fine. The shimmer are really really lackluster which normally brands have the opposite so I find you know the mattes are super boring but they're good they're basic they blend nice I don't have a problem with that but in order to create a color story like this and for me to like and use this palette the quality needs to be there because the story isn't so interesting and unfortunately the quality wasn't there I was really happy with this color story I was like okay this is the first Fenty palette that I'm into I got it and I'm not I'm not <laughs> the quality is not that good I don't don't recommend it. You can get much better eyeshadows at an even better price than this. So this is a miss for me. Don't recommend this one. Okay, the next palette that I have is the annual Huda Beauty palette. These are always pricey. This is the Rose Quartz palette. I've talked about this a lot recently. This came out at the very beginning of November. I love this palette. It doesn't really scream Christmassy to me. I suppose it screams more winter to me but nonetheless they launch these every year as a part of like a holiday drop and this is super duper nice i love this this is fighting for my favorite Huda palette i described this in another video saying okay this isn't going to be my number one favorite palette when i look at it does it look better than all the others Mm -mm. I like Mercury Retrograde better than this. However, this will end up being my most used because it has the most colors that I'm more inclined to wear. So the curation of it just makes sense for me. If you have Mercury Retrograde and New Nudes from Huda Beauty, you do not need this palette. Unless you're interested in getting it. I can't tell you that. If this is your first Huda palette that you're looking to invest in, you will love this. I definitely recommend it. And it also is extremely beautiful. This is my favorite packaging so far, but quality is not an issue. I, I don't like the little gel shadow in here, but the rest, A+, plus, really great textures in here, no pressed glitters. You can't go wrong with it. It's just a matter if you feel like you need it or not, but I, I'm on the edge of you need it. It's a huge hit in my eyes. This next palette is probably the one that I'm the least familiar with because it is the newest one in my collection, but I did want to um, give a little bit of love to the Mount Cosmetics Amor y Mariposas palette. Look at this, wow, it's crazy. And there's a huge message behind the palette as well. This is one of Melt's best that I've personally tried, but here's the catch, you have to like the color story and feel as though you would use the color story. It's a hit quality wise for me. I really like it. I think this is one of Melt's better quality palettes, better performing palettes, great pigmentation, very blendable. The caveat is and why I'm not in love with this palette is because it's just, it's a bit too out there for me. There's not enough toned down colors. Like the colorful shades are really, really bold, really colorful, nothing to really tone it down. Like yes, I do see, of course, there's a neutral row here, but it's just not enough for me. So the color story isn't great for me, but if you know somebody or you love bold, bold makeup, the quality is really great on this. So I do think this palette is a hit 
if you think you're going to wear these colors. You won't be disappointed with the quality. You're going to get that boom on the lid. This palette definitely pushes me out of my comfort zone. It's a really nice one, but I don't think it's going to be for everybody. Let's move on to Natasha Denona. We're going to start off with the order palette that I have. I didn't include retro in here. That didn't scream holiday e to me, but this one certainly did. This is the mini Metropolis palette, and if you do not own the Metropolis palette, like the OG, I think you will be very happy with this. I think this is a great way to get a nice curation of Natasha Denona colors for $25. Of course, if you have the Metropolis palette, you do not need this. Or if you love the Metropolis palette so much and happened to love these colors, okay, you know what, this could be great for travel. But this is just a way, great way to get a little taste of Natasha Denona. I don't think the color story is necessarily unique or really inspiring to me, but I think it's a really great curation and I think the color story is perfect for the holidays. I'm thinking of doing like a holiday palette recommendation or something of that nature. It's getting kind of late though but if I were to do that this would be in here because this screams Christmas holidays to me. I really like it. For me it wouldn't be a need. The quality though is fantastic. That's definitely a hit there and I think most of you guys will like this. So all around this is a really really great palette and just take this blue out here. Look how wearable that is and then add the blue you can really get kind of like a fun look with this as well so I really like this one I think it's a great curation next up we have the glam face palette so we're mostly going to focus on the eyeshadow portion down here I think that this palette is a hit my only kind of thing is though this blush already dried out on me so in terms of a face palette I'm not going to talk so positively but in terms of the eyeshadow portion and even the highlights recommend this really like this I mean before the blush dried out I was 100% on board with this palette. I've taken a little bit of a step back because the blush is such a huge part of this palette, but I do love the colors that we have in here. I love the packaging. The shimmers in here are fantastic. I love that it's so neutral and she added such boring colors, but she made it more glam by just making the textures of the neutral so pretty and sparkly. So the quality on these is great. I ended up loving this a lot more than I thought I would. I originally wasn't too intrigued by this palette. I thought it looked a little cheap online, honestly, but I've been proved wrong. This is a hit. It's probably not the best holiday palette, taking a look down at my table, but it's really, really good. I mean, these aren't anything too exciting, but I did get them in PRs, and they were part of a holiday set, so I thought we'd talk about these little one-size quads. So they both came in a point-made eye set, so you get them with an eyeliner. That's a pretty good eyeliner. I don't think you need these sets, though. So one of the quads is in Golden Cocoa, which is a little bit more golden, and then we have Copper Spice which is a little bit more warm. I loved the looks that I was able to get with these, but I don't think they're the best formula. I don't think they're must-haves. I found the mattes to be a little bit more difficult to blend. Nothing too bad, you know? You could get gorgeous looks with these, but it's just not the best quality on the market. In his bigger palette, the first one that launched, I feel like the quality in that was better than the quality in these. These just take a little extra elbow grease to get the mattes to blend. The shimmers are gorgeous, have a lot of texture to them. These aren't a miss, but I'm gonna say miss just because they're definitely not the most exciting release for the holidays. I think what a cute gift it would make. You know, it's not a bad value at all, honestly, but I don't think you need it for yourself. I'd be happy to receive this as a gift. It'd be a good gift idea, especially for somebody who doesn't have a ton of makeup in their collection, but it's not a must have. So let's give it a miss. Ooh, Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath came out with three palettes this holiday season. We'll just we'll go for the gusto. Let's start off with the big one. This is the Mothership Mega Celestial. Shiel Odyssey. Of course it's a hit. She can't do no wrong. It's a great value to get a little bit of a taste of Pat McGrath or a big taste actually. It doesn't have her glimmery shimmery blitz astral shades which kind of sucks but the quality in here really fun. I've had a lot of fun with this palette. I will say it's not my favorite color curation for some reason. I don't feel as inspired by this palette as I do by other palettes, which is very, very odd. And I think the reason is because the mattes in here are so boring. They're like brown and pink and there's only three. And I just feel like I could get more versatile looks if she added more mattes to accompany the brighter shades in here. So I wish she would have done that, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. Nonetheless, it's still a gorgeous palette, especially if you do like those everyday 
tones. I think this is going to be one of your favorite Pat McGrath releases. There is not a single dud in this palette. In this situation, if you want to try Pat McGrath, if you tend to wear more neutral shades but aren't afraid to maybe play with your makeup every now and then, even if it's just in the comfort of your own home. I think you'll really like this. It's a great value and the quality on this is really good. So this one is definitely a hit. And this really represents holiday makeup to me. It is very holiday with the packaging and holiday value, okay? I feel like holiday makeup sets is about really getting a taste of a brand, buying a value set, trying multiple things at a really good price. This is the perfect palette for that. So one of my higher recommendations for the holiday season pickups. Okay, we also have two quads that came out in the collection. I'm always, always gonna recommend the bigger palette over these. It's a much better value, but let's let's talk about the two quads. So here we have the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad and Deep Space Divinity. This is my favorite of the two, but it most certainly is not a must have. I like it quality wise, it's a hit. Color story wise, it's a hit, but it's not a must have. It's kind of a luxury to be able to pick this one up. If you're a collector like me, I think you're gonna like it. Even the Duochrome Special Shade in here, it's not unique. Like a lot of brands, if they are gonna come out with a Duochrome, it typically is this kind of color, neutral reddish color, a bronze and a champagne. There really is nothing unique about it other than it's just a Pat McGrath quad. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I, I mean, I have 24 palettes here and it's not the one that I'm gonna be like, oh my God, you must get this one. And of course, same thing goes for the Bronze Borealis. Let me open this one up. I mean, this is my least favorite of the holiday palettes. Of the two quads at the very least, I probably will use this one more than the other one. But this is like, you can get these colors in Pat McGrath palettes already. This screams Divine Rose 1 and Divine Rose 2. Any of her rose palettes, I feel like you're gonna get similar shades to this one. Quality is great. Color story is very pretty, very wearable. You get a gorgeous look. But again, you definitely don't need to have it. So same feelings as the other palette, but this one is even more so dupable. <laughs> but I will say about those two, of course they are the typical fabulous, amazing Pat McGrath Labs formula. So that does put them up notches over some other palettes that I'm talking about just because the quality is superb. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about a major, major miss. The Tom Ford Soleil palette came out in the shade Naked Pink. This is his holiday collection, the Soleil collection. <laughs> if there was one word that I could use to describe this, and if you've watched my videos, you already know what that word is, it's nothing. This doesn't show up on me at all. I've had many of you also who said you were quite fair. This also didn't show up, and this is $90. $89. $90. $90. Oh, it's just the biggest waste of money. Like, there's not much I can say because there's not much that shows up. <laughs> it, it's literally taking $90 and throwing it in the trash. And I know you guys are like, return it, Morgan. I, I've i gotten my money back on this just by all the times that I've given it screen time. <laughs> I've given it a lot of screen time. Um, Yeah, don't buy that. Huge miss. Don't waste your money. And I don't care if they say, you know, the Soleil palettes are, aren't supposed to be pigmented or... I've tried some really great sheer eyeshadows in my time with trying makeup. That's not a good sheer eyeshadow formula at all. Let's move on to arguably, I wanna say, the very first holiday palette to release this season. It's been a while since I've used it because it released, I feel like, months ago. So I'm wearing it on my eyes now and it is the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Palette. This is one of the classic holiday palettes for me. They launch a palette like this every year in the tin packaging. This year, they stepped away from gingerbread and got into uh, cinnamon buns, which I haven't had one in so long, but nothing smells better than a cinnamon bun. And you know, <sighs> Too Faced got the scent, but honestly, the scent in here's not that good. It's like, it's definitely calmed down since I've had it. And normally Too Faced scents last a long time, which, you know, I, that's not a bad thing though, because sometimes their makeup be too strong. But anyways, <laughs> this is the palette that I'm wearing uh, the fact that I buy these every year should say something about these, but here's the thing. 
The quality on this isn't the greatest. Every time I've used this palette, I've had to put in a little extra work just to make sure everything blended well, to make sure I didn't get too much of a mess on my face. But I still like every single look that I create, and the color story is just so wearable. It definitely is repetitive every year. I'm completely aware of that, but I like it. It's just something that's really festive. It's tradition for me to pick these up, and they're not bad enough to have me stop buying them every year. They're just barely good enough to have me continue buying them every year. It's not an amazing palette. You know, I'm looking down. I have Pat McGrath, Huda Beauty, and Natasha Denona. This doesn't even come near them, but this also isn't the price of them either, so I'm not mad about it. I think it's a great palette to gift. It's super cute, or if you like the colors, it's not a bad palette. I think this is a hit, and I do say that tentatively because it really isn't the greatest palette, honestly. Quality-wise, this is less good than the last few years, but it's totally workable. And just the festivity of it all and the color creation, I still have a lot of fun with this. I mean, look at my eyelid right now. You see, it just has that really pretty glimmer. It works. I like it. I like the look. It's more of a festivity. It's not a necessity, but I, it makes me feel excited for holiday makeup season. Okay. The last four palettes that I have kind of all came together from Viseart. Now, I'm not including Kajmiri and Bijouette, though sh I'm sure they could qualify as holiday palettes, and those are hits if you want my quick two cents on them. But I think that was their fall launch, and this is their holiday launch. Anyway, we're going to talk about very clearly the holiday launch. These are the Petty Fours. They are just darling little palettes. I've talked about these a lot, so I'm going to go quick on these. But Lapis, talk about the perfect little winter palette. Baby blues in here, silvers. I really like this one. It's not a color story I'm going to reach for, but I do like this one a lot. I think it's it's not the most expensive. It's good quality, and it might be nice to pick up, you know, if you don't play with colors like this very often and you want some good quality in these colors, good to have. Garnet, I mean, great for these warm tone holiday Thanksgiving kind of vibes over here. Not a necessity though for me, very, very easily dupable, but I don't have anything bad to say about any of these. I'm just judging by the color stories and if I would use them or not. I think one of the most popular for you guys is going to be Peridot because, or Peridot, excuse me, because I mean, green is so in right now, and this is the perfect little green quad. It's not too obnoxious. You know, the green is kind of subdued, or you can make it subdued, or you can put this all over the lid like I did, and it's really pretty and festive, great for this Christmas season. I mean, these guys are like the perfect holiday season color stories. I think one of you guys were like, this is for Christmas. Um, I didn't talk about bullion yet, Bull but bullion's the perfect New Year's look. Garnet's the perfect Thanksgiving look and Lapi Lapis or Lapi is the perfect like Hanukkah look and I'm just like yes that's exactly how I would describe them you can't get any more festive than them and then I didn't talk about this but Bouillon is one of my favorites of the four it's a great New Year's Eve look now all of these are dupable for sure they're not like color stories we've never seen before but what haven't we seen at this point quality on these is superb if you're into busy art i really like these these are a great stocking stuffer because they're so small i know muse beauty pro is having a deal on these i'm not exactly sure what the deal is at the top of my head but it's worth checking out if you want to kind of stock up on a few of these uh these are hits are they one of my favorite releases from busy art so that's why i'm like oh my gosh i love these i love busy art this is amazing but like looking down at my table, are they must-haves of all of the holiday releases? No, but they're really, really, really good. And I, if you want a cute little quad, I mean, those are the way to go. Anyways, I did it. I talked about all 24 eyeshadow palettes that came out during this holiday season. I hope that this could work as a guide for you and helped you pick out what holiday eyeshadow palette you wanted for yourself or for others. I think I have a video using all of these. And if it's not a dedicated video, they're incorporated somewhere. So I definitely covered all of these if you need more detail on these. And I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. Make sure you are subscribed. Turn that notification bell on because it is Vlogmas. I am uploading every day. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.